What's happening, Colts Nation? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a record that the Colts defense is going for. And to be honest, whether it's this week against the Falcons or in one of the other games, it's pretty much guaranteed to happen. But it needs to be mentioned because it's impressive what this team's been able to do for all the scrutiny that this team has gone through, specifically the defense, right? Some of the things that happened last year, some of the things that have happened this year, there have been different times where defense looks absolutely god awful. But as we look forward, the Colts right now are tied for the franchise record in terms of sacks in a single season, okay? And that's, if you include the 16-game seasons, right, we haven't even gotten to the 16th game. So they're able to do this with some room to spare in terms of the record. You don't have to put an asterisk on it. So when you look at it, we start going through the guys that have sacks on this team. I believe it's 13 different guys that have at least one sack on the team. And at the top of the list is Samson Ebicom, okay? And, And listen, a lot of this list is about to be like, Chris Ballard Central. He either brought these guys in through trade, free agency, or the draft. So these guys at the top of the list, some of these other guys are big name guys making an impact in different ways. So again, you start with Samson Ebicom with nine and a half sacks at the top. Dio Dangbo with eight. He's having the best year of his career. We'll get into him in just a little while. Quiddy Pay sitting here with seven and a half sacks, also having the best year of his career so far. DeForest Buckner, I thought he had eight or eight and a half um i mentioned in a video a couple of days ago that he had eight or eight and a half he only has six sacks i say only he has six sacks this year that's really good for an interior defensive lineman he does his thing there are a lot of times where quarterbacks see him coming and they just throw the ball into the dirt out of their hands real quick and try to have him not kill him but he has been able to get home six different times he also has nine tackles for loss taekwon lewis is next in line with three sacks Taven Bryan has two. Jake Martin has two. Kenny Moore has a sack and a half this year, has a couple where he's gotten close, just hasn't quite gotten there. Zaire Franklin has a sack and a half. Tommy Ade in his rookie season, sack and a half, even though he hasn't had a whole lot of playing time this season. Isaiah Land has a sack. Eric Johnson has a sack. EJ Speed has a sack. And then Grover Stewart at the very bottom with a half a sack in eight games. So there are a lot of guys here getting after the quarterback, and it all adds up. To, to history for the Colts. They're about to set a franchise record. And if they keep going at the rate that they've been going recently, other than the zero sack game against the Bengals, then they they could end up being the team that finishes with the most sacks in the NFL. Now, obviously, the Ravens are on top of that list. We're still chase, chasing them. We're going to have to catch up a little bit here over these last few weeks. But I think that we can do it with what we've been putting in, with as good as these guys have been here towards the end of the year. I think we have a chance to go and grab the lead in the NFL. But I think what we've seen is great. Being able to get after the quarterback, it's something that we haven't really been able to do since the days of Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis. And a big part of that, of course, Samson Hebicon plays a part in that. But a pretty massive part of this whole thing is Dio Dangbo, as of late especially, been great. And if you look at the numbers through the years of his career, in his rookie season, 2021, he played 10 games, had six tackles, a half a sack, one QB hit, and four pressures. Now, obviously, he was coming off an injury, even though he was active for 10 games, didn't play a whole lot during that season. So numbers really down. Then you look at 2022 when the whole Colts team was just terrible as as a whole, basically. He played 17 games or was active for 17 games, had 31 tackles, five tackles for loss, five sacks, 11 QB hits, and 17 pressures. Then when you look at it this year, playing time a little up and down, he's part of a deep rotation of guys that are coming in and out. But it's been 14 games. He has 34 tackles, eight tackles for loss, the eight sacks that we already mentioned, 16 quarterback hits, and 21 pressures. Okay, and of course, as you could tell, all those are career-high numbers for him, and we have three games to go. He's absolutely balling out. He's figuring it out, man. There was always that potential. We talked about it when he came into the league about how this is a guy, once he gets healthy, like even though he was drafted after Pay, he was at least, for me, 
always expected to be better than Quiddy Pay, and now he's starting to figure it out. He has more sacks than Quiddy this year, and he has less playing time, right? Same amount of tackles for loss. So I really like what I'm seeing from Dio, really like what I'm seeing from a lot of these guys. And ever since we got Grover Stewart back into lineup, running backs in the two games that Grover Stewart's been back, running backs are averaging 3.4 yards per carry. And during the six games that Grover Stewart missed, we were giving up more than 150 yards per game on the ground, and I believe it was 4.8 yards per carry while Grover Stewart was out. So, I mean, it was it was bad, and it was hard to stop the run. But with Grover Stewart back, we're able to stay on top of it. We're able to force teams into difficult situations. And obviously, this is game by game, right? It's only been two games. Bengals game went one way, and then the Steelers game went the complete opposite way. Right. Two totally different games, but the impact is there. Like we saw even before Grover got suspended, we were giving up like 120 rush yards per game, but we were only giving up 3.7 yards per carry. So it was more so teams. There were more attempts on us than most other teams in the league at that time. And that's that's why the rush yards were higher, whereas with Grover Stewart out, teams didn't have to run the ball as much. And if they were, they were getting more yards. So. Having Grover Stewart back is going to matter. EJ Speed was even talking about it, about how in the run game, Grover Stewart can eat up double teams. And if people want to try to come off of Grover Stewart and head up to the linebackers, Grover Stewart's going to make a play and he's going to get a tackle for loss or he's going to get a sack or or hurry the quarterback up on a play action play, like something like that. Like it, it makes a difference having – over Stewart there and it helps the linebackers be able to operate we saw EJ Speed was a dominant force in the game against the Steelers and he's able to do that kind of stuff because DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart are on the defensive line same reason Zaire Franklin has 149 tackles right now okay so we're seeing with this defense the different components that are in place as long as these guys are in the lineup we're good to go, okay? And that, it makes sense. With Juju coming back, we're able to get after the quarterback more. With Juju there and Jalen Jones on the other side and Kenny Moore in the game, like, we're going to have opportunities to get after the quarterback. And we play Taylor Heineke this upcoming week, and he's somebody that likes to get the ball out of his hands quickly if he has the opportunity to. But he's also going to have times where he's looking for the downfield pass, and that's when we'll see the sack production come in. I think we'll be able to make that happen. I think the record's going to be broken this week and I think we'll be able to do it fairly quickly in this game to be completely honest with you so if you share in that enthusiasm go ahead hit that subscribe button make sure you have notifications turned on we're going to have the injury report from today we're going to talk about it tomorrow where we discuss both teams but because of the day job won't be able to get this to you today but I will have it for you so again make sure you're subscribed with those notifications turned on of course I appreciate you stopping by for another video and as always take care of yourself Take care of each other and go Colts.